Good morning, artists, and welcome to the studio. My name is Allison Jensen, and I am the owner of Orange Easel School of Art. I have a special project for you today. If you have a teenage artist, even preteen artist, up through adults, you're going to like this one. We do this at one of our um, birthday party packages for the older kiddos, and we do um, we do this. We've done it for a camp before, for a day camp. I'm trying to think. We, it, I feel like we, maybe we did it for a wine and craft night for adults. But we're going to be making some special little pendants. And the base of the pendant is a washer. So something very accessible and easy that you can get from a hardware store. They're inexpensive and they make great bases for different art projects. So we're going to start with a washer. And then um, we're going to layer on a collage. And of course the collage is this big. So we're talking teeny, teeny, tiny little collage that you're going to be making on top of the pendant and it's very personal and then it becomes a piece of jewelry. So I'm going to walk you through all of the steps to do that and I've got um, different projects in different stages so that I can actually show each of the steps. When you do this at home you're going to have dry time in between them and so uh, you know like you're not going to do this in the duration of the video because you'll have to have things actually dry before you get to the next step but I've got different stages here so that I can show it all to you in one video. This will be archived on our Facebook page for reference and then it'll also go up to YouTube so you can always come back to it if you're working on a project like this. These make great gifts. My kiddos out there, if you need something special to give you know, your best friend or to give your mom or to give your teacher, these make fantastic gifts and we'll talk about as we go through the different uses that you have for them. Let me show you a couple variations of these. Um, that I just I dug through my stash on things that were left here. This one, let's start with this one. Well, no, let's start with this one. This one here, get it close to the camera. This one here, right, it's ginormous. This is a huge washer. It is probably a full, maybe, oh gosh, what do you think that is? Three inches in diameter. It's a zinc washer. It has another washer layered on top of it as well. And you can see it's got a dimensional glaze to it. So it's real shiny and it's real smooth. It almost has like a bubble on top of it. There's two of them. They've both been collaged with pretty little scrapbook papers. It's orange. It's my favorite. And then it is just, um, this is a, like a hemp cord and it's been looped through and it hangs there. This was one that we did actually as a wind chime. So this was a wind chime project and so that's why it has the hemp cord. It wasn't made for being jewelry. It was made for being outside and they bang into each other and they look pretty and they make pretty noises. So that's what this one was. So you have a double kind of layer going on. This one here, this one here, you can see it is a washer, but we've collaged over the whole thing and we've used that diamond glaze and I'll show you what that looks like when we go over the supplies, but I've used that diamond glaze to go over the top of the entire thing. So it doesn't have a hole. So we can't thread something through there and then loop it through and, and use it as a pendant. Um, this is just a little trinket coin that we keep in the desk. It's usually here in my little orange jar if you've seen it. So, and it has the, the Orange Easel logo on it and some pretty, um, it's like a, I don't know what that is, but it's a, it's a pen and ink kind of design in the background that we cut from old newsprint or something. So, and then it has our logo on it. So this one, these were ones we did for an open studio session maybe? I'm not even sure. But here's a variation on where we actually soldered on a ring. So you can see we, we didn't, this was a, a supply that was made but um, never used. And so it actually has a jump ring soldered on the top of it already ready for a chain. So maybe we'll have to make a soldering video sometime. Or you'll have to come and take one of our classes so you can learn how to solder that. Today we're not going to do soldering, today we're actually going to do this looping method for jewelry and then you can make it, um, the stuff I'm going to use is leather and it's nice so it's going to actually be a necklace or you could use it actually for a keychain or, or a backpack tag or something. Alright, now the washers that you go get, you're going to need washers, they come in all different sizes. They come in big and little. I'm going to be using this size here because I feel like it shows the best on camera. So today that's the one I've got. Um, and it's already on my paper plate. I like to have this surface because when we go and we're going to put our collages on top, we, we want to have a surface that's protected. So I'm going to do mine on the paper plate. And I'll tip the camera down so that you can see it. So, so far all you need is a washer and something to protect your surface. And I love paper plates. You are going to need something to collage it. Right? So that can be newspaper, that can be old books, that can be old sheet music, that can be uh, magazines, which is what I've got today. 
Um, you could do it with scrapbook paper, you could do it with junk mail, you only need a little bit and you're looking for something that has a fun pattern, that has color, that, um, that maybe you could cut words out of, which is my favorite. So whatever kind of little collage that you want to make on here, that's what you need. You need enough paper to fill that. Okay. I like a pencil and I'll show you why. You're going to need a pencil for the collage in order to get it actually to fit. You're going to need a pair of scissors and these are mine. Um, well, they're one of many and um, preferably it would have a sharp tip. I just couldn't dig mine out of the box. So something with a, with, you know, that's small and intricate. We are cutting small things. If you are so inclined and you'd like to get crazy, you can do an exacto. But if you do that, you need a different surface to cut on. You need to make sure you have a cutting mat or a big stack of newspaper to cut on so that you're not cutting into the table. Okay. I do just fine, honestly, with a pair of scissors and just a little bit of patience. So you're going to cut all of that up. Um, that's all the stuff that you'll need for the cutting and the paper. And then in order to stick it down, you're going to need some sort of glue. I love Mod Podge for this. If you got Mod Podge, use it. If you don't have Mod Podge, use some Elmer's glue. That's fine. Elmer's glue, washable glue. You can use a glue stick. Um, you can use rubber cement, any kind of adhesive to go down on here. But like I said, I do love a Mod Podge. It's nice and thick. Or a craft glue, like a tacky glue. That works really well. I like the, the brushing method. So even if you have a squeezy bottle, right, kiddos? You got that squeezy bottle of Elmer's glue. Squeeze it onto like a paper plate or a teeny tiny little cup. And we're going to use a brush to, to actually apply it on here. So you get a nice thin layer and even coat and you don't use too much. You're not going to use very much glue, just a teeny tiny little bit. Because I'm using Mod Podge, I have a jar of water and I've got my paintbrush in the jar of water. Mod Podge is a permanent. Um, a permanent adhesive. So if it, if it dries on my brush, it ruins my brush and it dries really fast. So I want to make sure that if I've, and I've been Mod Podging already this morning, so that's why my water is kind of cloudy. If I am not using my brush, it goes in the water. Otherwise you set it down, you leave it out, you come back and it's been five minutes and your bristles are hard as can be and there's no redeeming it. So you want to make sure that if you're not using your brush, it goes in water. It doesn't really apply if you're using a washable one like um, Elmer's glue, but it's a good habit to get into. So I got brush, water, Mod Podge, magazine, scissors. This is a lot, right? I got my pencil, I got my, my, my little washer pendant and we're ready to go in the first step. So we'll do the first step and then we'll talk about what we need to kind of finish it and um, put it all together. Okay. Cause we're going to need to use some diamond glaze and then we're going to need to use all of our jewelry findings in order to actually finish this pendant. Should we make a little collage? I think we should. Now I used a magazine, which of course I have lost. Here it is. It's on my floor. I used a magazine. Um, we have a stack of these. If you guys ever have magazines that you want to get rid of, we would love to have them. Um, and you're looking for colors and patterns and textures that you really like. So if this is your favorite color, this could be the background of that washer pendant. If you really love a good red, there's a good red. If you really love pattern or color, you could find something that has pattern. I mean, even just something like, um, what is that? It's like a white garland. This is a Christmas magazine, obviously. There's like a white garland here and that would give you a fun little pattern or plaid. You could do a red and red and black plaid one. Um, so you could find little pieces of this and, and use it for your pendant. I actually went right off the cover of the magazine. And I'll show you. I already cut it out so that you guys wouldn't have to sit here and let me do, watch me do this. But um, I really liked all these little sticks and this whitey gray background. I love gray. And so this is the one that I chose. Okay. So what I did was I cut out a little piece from there and then I laid my washer on top of that little piece. And then I took my pencil and I drew all the way around the washer and all the way around the middle of the washer. And then I took it off and then I cut it out. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what mine looks like. I went ahead and did this because it took me a while, right? So I went ahead and did mine. You can see it's got that little twiggy kind of pattern on it. There's a little white flower there from the wreath. So this is going to be the base of my collage and I like it because it's kind of a neutral. Um, I didn't notice this until um, I flipped it over but it's got a fun purple on the back so if I wanted to have a, a purple and white kind of pendant I could do that as well but it's already there. I will say when you do it in the pencil so if you when you outline it with the pencil it becomes like a little bit bigger right because the pencil is on the outside of the washer when you go around. 
So you actually trace just a little bit bigger shape than what you actually need. So my tip to you when you go to cut it is to actually cut just a little bit inside that pencil line. Um, otherwise, uh, the, pen, the paper, when you put it down on the, on the pendant, so you put it down on this little washer, it'll actually hang over the edge just a hair. Um, and you don't want that. You want it to be either perfectly flush with the edge of this metal or you actually want it to be just a little bit inside of it so you have a teeny tiny lip of metal that actually shows in your pendant. I don't know if we can see it on here. Yeah, you can kind of see it on here a little bit. You can see the metal on the outside. The paper doesn't go right to the edge. It's just a little bit on the inside there of that, of that ring so we can see some of it. One of the tricks that I have if you're having a hard time with that is um, like getting it perfectly like just a little bit on the inside. You can go ahead and glue this down and after it dries take a little bit of sandpaper on the outside of your washer and just rub it on there and it'll kind of it'll do that job for you. But you got to do it when the glue's dry. Don't, do, don't try to do it when the glue's wet. So let me go ahead and glue this down. I do have a paper towel around here somewhere but I can't find it so I'll do the paintbrush on my pants trick. Don't do that at home. All right, here we go. This is my Mod Podge, and it goes on to the washer. I just find it easier to put it on the washer than on the paper. So I'm gonna put it all over the top of my zinc washer. I will say it's a good idea to make sure that your washers are clean when you do this. Sometimes they can be kind of greasy and grimy and then the adhesive doesn't work. This goes back in the water, drop it in. This goes right on top of here. Um, and it's a pretty easy process, right? We're just gluing it down. So I want to kind of hold it in place, maybe count to like five, give it a good like press in there, get all the air bubbles out, make sure it's nice and centered, and we're good to go. So that is glued down on there. Pretty cool, huh? Isn't that pretty? I like it. All right, now as far as the next layer to this, I could stop right here if I'm like, I love this little neutral pendant, isn't that pretty? But um, I can take it one step further and I can add more layers onto it. So I was actually looking for it and couldn't find one because I ran out of time. I was actually looking for some orange in my magazine that I could take and cut into a teeny tiny stripe and just put it straight down here. I didn't find one and that's okay. Um, I did find some words that I like and I'm kind of a sucker for word art. Um, so there was an advertisement in the magazine that said, share the beauty and then blah, 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 blah. And so I cut out the words share the beauty and they're teeny teeny tiny you wanna see um, and they were on this gray background and I didn't like the gray background on my gray pendant and so I actually look how tiny that is oh hang on let's try this if I remove the light maybe you could see it see it's backwards that's the word beauty I didn't like the gray on here and so I actually cut them out pasted them to a teal page in there and then cut them out again. So my, my share the beauty now, now has a little border of teal so that way it kind of pops off. I told you this was gonna be a, a very mini collage, right? So you can do as many layers of this as you want to once you get your background on here. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and then, while I'm talking to you um, and we'll talk about some of the other things that you can use. I love words on here. You can find initials. So if you wanted to do initial art, you could um, you could find like your the initials to your your name, your first name, middle name, you know, last name. You could find um, you know just the monogram. Find a fun. I will say that um, the words have to be smaller than you think they do. Like you're gonna find this fun script letter, and you're gonna be like, this is perfect, and it's you know five inches too big. So it's pretty tiny. It's probably like a, a you know an a 10 point maybe maybe 11 point font that you're looking for it's it's pretty small so text works really well and um, and then you can make these personal jewelry if you get really crazy maybe you can find your name someplace right not first and last but maybe just your first name if you have a common name you might be able to find that now once I have this on here I'm gonna take the Mod Podge I'm gonna brush it over the entire pendant and this is this is something Mod Podge is so good at is make is as a, as a permanent sealer and I'm using a glossy Mod Podge they have all sorts of Mod Podge but this is a high gloss Mod Podge that we buy in bulk if you have Elmer's glue um, I, you could do this as well um, you just want to make sure it's a really really thin coat okay this goes back in the water jar 
This goes to the camera so you can see what it looks like to share the beauty, right? So it's ready to go. You can see I kind of had to turn some of the letters so that they would fit. And we're ready for the next step. So this is ready for the next step, which is the finishing. And that's what gives it that dome shape. If you've ever seen like those necklaces they make out of Scrabble tiles, right? Um, where they almost have this like clear resin on top, like a bubble. That's what this stuff is going to do to our washer. So it comes in all sorts of brands, right? But I'm going to show you like my collection. And you buy this stuff at Michael's. Um, I'm sure it's at Hobby Lobby as well. If you go to Michael's, I can tell you where it is because I go there all the time. I practically live there. So it is in the um, adhesive aisle. And it's going to be towards like where, where Mod Podge is, where rubber cement is, where super glue is, where actual resin is. Um, and it's usually hanging on the wall. So and it's in packaging. This is one of my favorites. This is just, it's called Diamond Glaze. And, you know, kind of like I told you yesterday when you talked about Kleenex, you know, the brand Kleenex, you really mean just any kind of tissue. Um, I call all of these Diamond Glaze because this is the first one that I used. So, so this is a dimensional glaze. It's going to actually hold the dimension. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry clear. So there's also this one here. It's a jewelry pendant gel. And I think we bought this one from Amazon. It also works really well. Um, and then a Mod Podge, of course, makes one as well. So this is a, they call it Dimensional Magic, and it's made by Mod Podge. And I love the Mod Podge brand. It comes in different kinds. So, like, there's some that are glitter. I don't think I have any glitter ones. But I I've, I've used to have, they have, like, a glitter version of the Mod Podge one, which is kind of fun. So any of these work just fine and a little goes a long way so you really don't need seven bottles of it I just happen to have it and I probably have more I just dug into the closet so, um, so we'll open up this now one of the things you want to know is you don't want to take this and shake it because we want we don't want bubbles in this if, if there's bubbles in it then there will be bubbles inside our artwork so we don't want to shake it or anything like that um, it takes a long time to dry I mean so do this in a place where you can sit it and just leave it alone. Because if you do it someplace and then you're gonna move it, the chance of you tipping it and that glaze like falling off the edge, pretty good. Do it right where you know you can leave it sit for three or four hours. Okay, now let's tip my camera down. I wanna talk about what's gonna go on here. Anyone ever done the penny trick where you take a penny and you drop water on it? And the more you drop water on it, you think that it's going to all fall off the penny, but you can actually get quite a bubble of water on top of a penny. And it does that because of surface tension. But the moment something breaks that surface tension, it all rolls off. If you haven't done that, try it out. Because this is the same process. And um, when we teach this to our kids, we actually do the penny and the water drop um, experiment first so that they understand how easily that surface gets broken right that surface tension if you break it it all falls off this is the same way you break the surface tension you can't get it back okay you break the surface tension it's all gonna fall off you're gonna get a nice flat glaze but you're not gonna get that bubble um, so if you break the surface tension here you gotta wipe it off let it dry and try again after it's all dried out okay so here's how this is gonna work let's move my camera nice and close let's bend it down Let's zoom in and back up. All right, I wish I had like one of those really like micro cameras, but that's okay. So test it over here. Oh yeah, it works just fine. Little bit at a time. It's going to be like a milky white, but it's gonna dry clear. We're gonna do this in glitter fest too, but of course we're gonna be using the, bl the glitter kind. You wanna to stay towards the middle and it will spread to the outside edge. And you wanna just kinda of go a little bit at a time. So there's a bubble, so I'm gonna wipe that off. We don't want bubbles. If you get a bubble inside the resin, you can pop it very, very gently with um, like a straight pin or a thumbtack or something. Um, so we want to go right up to the edge here, but we don't want to fall over the edge because that would be bad. Can you see how it's kind of bubbled up and milky? 
a little bit more on this side. I always think I can go more than what I can. If you want to, you can grab a toothpick and kind of pull it to the edges a little bit. Um, I'm gonna just leave it alone. Let me see if I can get just a hit, hair closer for you. Ooh, let's see if we can get you. Of course, I can't even see what you're seeing because, you know, it's on forward-facing camera mode. So I guess I'll find out later. Um, so that part, let's zoom out because you're really close. Woo! Hi, guys. All right, this is done. We would put this someplace and we would just let it sit. It's going to get clear, crystal clear, and it's going to have this really fun bubble shape to the top. That's a dimensional glaze. We've got to cap this. You can see I didn't use very much. This goes a long way. Great for Christmas presents. Just invest in this and some washers and you're good to go. All right, I'm going to set this to the side because I've got one somewhere. Where did it go? I've got one right here and we're going to talk about how to finish it. So pretend that this one's done and I'll talk to you about some finishing options for this. Real careful over there. Okay, my favorite thing to use for this is a leather cording. It doesn't have to be real leather. Um, where'd it go? Um, you can buy the faux leather, um, but I feel like, like this stuff here, this is a brown leather cord. Uh, this stuff here, this is more like a suede cord. We used that um, the other day. I love, um, I found this on Amazon and it came in all sorts of colors. So that's what we've been using for the birthday parties that do this project is this stuff. And when we do the birthday parties, we just do a very simple when it's because they don't get to take it home dry, still wet when they go home. So I just send them with a cord and all they're going to do, I don't know if you know this trick, right? So you fold it in half like this and you take the little loop. It goes in the washer like this, and then the two tails, they go through the little hole. And then all you do is pull it down. So they take home the leather cording, um, and then they'll put it together when, they're, when their pendant is dry, because of course they're taking that home wet. So this right here, if you had it long enough, right, so that I could take it and slip it over my head, I would be done with my necklace. The other option is you can do this same thing and you can get one of those little um, keychain rings. I feel like we're too low. Let's stop that. You have those little keychain rings and you can hook it on a keychain ring and you've got a little backpack tag or, um, or actually a keychain if, you, if you've got a set of keys. Um, you can make somebody a really durable keychain, right? So that is a really fun thing to do. Now let's say you want to make this into a necklace that has a clasp. Right, so you want it to actually clasp behind the head like this. You don't want to have it dangled down here because that's how long it would have to be in order to go over my big head. Okay, so you need to actually put a clasp on the end of that. So I want to show you how that works and we'll talk about the materials that you would need to finish that. I feel like that's a more impressive way to finish a necklace if you are um, giving it as a gift. So let's talk about that. You're going to need some crimps. And of course, I gotta find where my little itty bitty teeny tiny little crimps went. But they look like this. I already put one on one of the ends. And they pinch, let's see if we can go over here. No, that doesn't work. They pinch the end of that cord and they give us a loop on the end. And that's what we can hook a jump ring and a clasp onto. So, oh, there they are. So your, your crimps are teeny tiny. They come in all different sizes. They're super inexpensive at Michael's in the jewelry findings aisle. Itty bitty teeny tiny. But they, they're just, they're like little U shapes. And you stick your cord in the end of the U and then you take a pair of pliers and you push down both of the edges until it pinches the cord nice and tight. So you have a pair of little needle nose pliers and then you just squish it down in there. So um, you can actually buy a pair of crimping pliers if you want to. We have a set. Most of the time I don't even dig them out because these work just fine, right? So then I've got a crimp on both ends. So I finished both of these ends with teeny tiny little rings. The last step in doing this is to add a jump ring, which is a just a 
silver ring. You can get jump rings in all colors, but we're gonna use silver. And we're gonna open up the jump ring and we're gonna put it on the end here. We'll do a jump ring on one side and then we'll put a jump ring and a clasp on the other. So I'm gonna show you my trick on jump rings. My husband makes chain mail, so I know all about jump rings. Not chain mail like the letters, chain mail like the medieval armor. So you need two pliers for jump rings. You're gonna take one of them and you're gonna line it up right on the side of the jump ring. And at the very, very tippy top of this jump ring, there, I was looking for something to point with. I'm gonna point with my X-Acto knife. Don't try this at home. The very, very top of this jump ring is where the opening is. So, this right here is the opening of my jump ring, right at the top. Okay, and my plier is holding onto the whole side of that jump ring. Now I'm gonna use my other pliers. This is like an extension of my right hand. I'm never gonna let go of my right hand. My left hand is what's gonna grab on right next to it and it's going to twist. You don't wanna pull like this. If I pull like this, it deforms the ring. If I twist, it's super easy for me to get it back together. So I twist, so one hand went forward, one hand went back, and I've opened up my ring it's my favorite thing to teach when we teach jewelry is how to open a jump ring. I slide it on. I'm going to slide on my clasp while I'm at it. And then I'm going to grab my pliers. And I'm just the same motion, but it's backwards. I twist right back. And now we have, I'll hold it with my pliers so you can see. Now we have a clasp followed by a jump ring, followed by a crimp, followed by the rest of my necklace. Okay? And then we'll do it on this side. We'll add a jump ring here. This is good to know too, because if you ever have jewelry that breaks, you can open and close jump rings. Here we go. Put that one there. Take your pliers. It just takes practice. If you struggle with it, it's okay. It just takes practice. And you close that one. All right. And now we can take both ends and they come together and it's a beautiful, finished, polished looking. This is almost a choker with the, the length of the pendant, right? See? Isn't that pretty? So I'll put it on, you know, just because why not? Can watch me struggle to get this around my hair. <laughs> Necklaces get caught in my hair all the time. There! There we go. We got a finished jewelry pendant right there. Now, again, this is, doesn't have to be your only option to do a necklace. You can do it as a backpack tag. You can do it as a keychain. Um, you could do it as a wind chime, like I was saying with this one. We did it as a wind chime um, or just a wall hanging, and they're really pretty. It's a fun way to get metal art into your home because we don't do a lot with metal, um, I think, in the, as a home artist. Um, it's not something we necessarily think of. Maybe it scares us a little bit because we don't know what to use with it. But, um, but this is a fun way to do it, to use some, some collage and some adhesiveness and then a little bit of jewelry finding. So I hope you had fun with that. I hope you try it out. I know it's a lengthy project. If it's one that you get started with and you're a little bit lost and you're not really sure where to go next or maybe you get stumped on something, send me a message and I'll be happy to help you. Um, to do this project. We've done it a lot of times in the studio, so I've got a lot of um, problem solving kind of under my belt. So if you guys do try it out, I would love to see pictures of what you make. So you can set those on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and just tag us at Orange Easel Art. And we would love to see it and share it. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday and I will see you in the studio soon.